and Euclid's elements, Euclid begins by introducing five axioms. The first four are relatively self-evident. Given any two points, you could connect them with a line segment. Any line segment could be extended indefinitely. You can draw a circle with any given center and radius, and all right angles are equal. The fifth axiom, however, is a little bit different. It states, given any two lines, L and M, if a transversal cuts them, and the two interior angles on the same side sum to less than 180 degrees, or two right angles, then those two lines, if extended, will eventually intersect at a point on the same side where the two angles sum to less than 180 degrees. Now, mathematicians after Euclid spent a lot of time seeing if this fifth axiom could in fact be deduced from the first four axioms. This set of results, which you can deduce from the first four axioms, is called neutral geometry. Other mathematicians introduced other axioms which could be substituted for Euclid's fifth axiom. In other words, axioms which were logically equivalent. One of those was introduced by the mathematician John Playfair. It's called Playfair's axiom. Some textbooks even call it the Euclidean parallel postulate. Playfair's axiom says the following. Given any line L and a point P not on that line, there exists a unique line M, such that M passes through the point P, and the line M is parallel to the line L. In particular, there is only one such line. We would like to prove that these two axioms are equivalent. What that means is, if we assume the first four axioms of Euclid, then, given Euclid's fifth axiom, we could prove Playfair's axiom, or alternatively, if we assume Playfair's axiom, we could prove that Euclid's fifth axiom follows. For the first part of this proof, we'll begin by assuming Playfair's axiom is true, and we'll prove Euclid's fifth axiom. In other words, we're given the two lines L and M, a transversal that goes through them, and the two angles on one side sum to less than 180 degrees. Our task is to show that these two lines intersect at a point P on this side. So what we do next is we draw a line N such that the angle that N makes with a line K, we'll call that angle theta, we want the sum of alpha and theta to be 180 degrees. Since alpha plus beta was less than 180 degrees, we can find an angle theta larger than beta, such that alpha plus theta is equal to 180 degrees. And once we find that, we know that the angle that N makes with K on the side opposite from theta, that angle plus theta is equal to 180 degrees, therefore that angle is alpha. It's equal to this angle down here. And by the alternate interior angle theorem, that implies that these two lines, N and L, are parallel. Now remember, we were assuming Playfair's axiom to be true. Playfair's axiom says that there is only one line parallel to L through this point, B. Since N is parallel, therefore M cannot be parallel. Since M is not parallel to L, that means M and L must intersect at some point. Now all there remains to prove Euclid's fifth axiom is to show that that point is on the same side as these two angles, alpha and beta point must be over here somewhere. To show that the point of intersection is on the side of alpha and beta, we'll do a proof by contradiction. We'll assume, to the contrary, that the point P is on the side of K opposite from alpha and beta. Now, by the linear pair theorem, we know that these angles is marked alpha and delta add to 180. We also know that beta and epsilon add to 180. And since alpha plus beta is less than 180 by hypothesis, if we add delta and epsilon to both sides, on the left-hand side of this inequality, we have alpha plus beta plus delta plus epsilon. That sums to four right angles, what we would call 360 degrees. By a little bit of subtraction, we have that 180 is less than delta plus epsilon. Now consider this triangle that we've formed with the points A and B, 
where the transversal intersects L and M, and the point where L and M intersect, that point P. Well, the angle sum of that triangle, ABP, is angle delta plus angle epsilon plus angle omega, as we've marked it here. But delta and epsilon, added together, are already greater than 180 degrees. And therefore, the angle sum of this triangle is greater than 180. Earlier, we proved the sacchari legendre theorem, which says that in neutral geometry, the angle sum of any triangle must be less than or equal to 180 degrees. This is a contradiction. Therefore, our initial assumption that this point P was on the side opposite from the angles alpha and beta must be false. And therefore, this point of intersection must be on the same side of the line K as the angles alpha and beta. Now this is only the first half of our equivalency. We've shown that Playfair's axiom implies Euclid's fifth postulate. Now we must show that Euclid's fifth postulate implies Playfair's axiom. To begin this half of the proof, we assume that Euclid's fifth axiom is true, and we give the setup conditions for Playfair's axiom. We have a line L and a point P not on that line. We want to show that there is exactly one line through the point P that's parallel to L. Well, it's easy to construct one parallel line. Start by constructing a perpendicular to L that goes through the point P. And then, for this line K that we've constructed, construct a line perpendicular to K that goes through the point P. We can construct these lines because of Euclid's propositions 11 and 12. And furthermore, because all of these lines are perpendicular, we know that these alternate interior angles are equal. And therefore, by the alternate interior angles theorem, Euclid's proposition 27, we can conclude that the line M is parallel to the line L. However, we're not done yet. We need to show that this line M is unique, that this is the only parallel running through the point P. To do this, let's assume that there's a second line n that goes through this point p. We want to show that any other line going through this point could not possibly be parallel to l. Given this line, which runs through p, we'll choose a point r on the line n, which is on the same side of m as the point q. Now this angle theta that we have formed, the angle theta, which is r p q, that angle is smaller than a right angle. Now remember, we assumed at the beginning Euclid's fifth axiom holds. These two angles, therefore, sum to less than two right angles. Therefore, the lines N and L intersect. Well, if they intersect, they're not parallel. Therefore, any other line going through this point P is not parallel to L. The only parallel line is M. All other lines intersect L. And this completes the proof that Euclid's fifth axiom is logically equivalent to Playfair's axiom in the context of neutral geometry.